Hello and welcome to Storied Ozarks. You can find us on KUOZ's Channel 6, KUOZ's Facebook page, and KUOZ's YouTube page. Today's series of stories will delve us into personal image through self-love and embodying other characters through playing as an actor. So, join us soon with producer Clara McElroy. It doesn't matter where you, you, you exercise. The world is your gym. Nature is your gym. Your room is your gym. Working out is like being in your own world. It has calmed me. It has given me peace. It has made me more happy. It helps me clear my mind. The me I am today is because I have been working out. My name is Jonathan, or like some people call it, Jim Nathan Ezra Adley. I started this off on impulse decision. I just was like, you know what? By next year, I'm going to lose 50 pounds. And as the months go by, I give myself different goals. So you know the goal you want to get to. In 2019, the day before I left the Bahamas to come to college, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and that was my motivation. And the funny thing is, I didn't work out until a year after my diagnosis. Sometimes you feel alone, but it took me being diagnosed with diabetes and me being on the verge of losing my life for me to lose weight. Working out helps me live. Without self-love and self-confidence, I wouldn't be here speaking to you today. You know, you have to believe in yourself. You have to put on something and be like, I'm not gonna look good in that bitch. I'm gonna be the baddest bitch in that. Be your own motivation. Love yourself wholeheartedly because self-love is the best love. Be confident in yourself. Wear that dress, wear that crop top. Even if you're fat, you don't have to lose weight to look good, and that's what I always told myself. Girl, get up. You gotta get this body right for the summer. Get up, you, you look good. Ain't no time to give up. There's no time to throw in the towel. If there's anything, pick up that towel, go to the gym and use that towel to wipe off some sweat. Uh, hi, I'm Pat Farmer. I'm playing Robert in the University of the Ozarks theater production of Proof. It's stifling in there, goddammit, the radiators. Look, this is how we start. You read and we go. One reason I wanted to play the role is I thought it would provide me with the opportunity to implement some theory I'd spent most of my life teaching and seeing if I could implement it um, successfully or not. This has been, I think, a particularly pleasurable experience in that uh, all the students have been, uh, have been uh, quite pleasant and wonderful and fun and uh, a joy to be around. I enjoy stretching my creative muscles. I enjoy the energy uh, and uh, excitement uh, around the production. I don't feel like I'm acting with students. Rebecca Bailey is a very fine director. She hasn't treated me any different uh, than she treats the rest of the cast, and I don't consider myself a, uh, a faculty member. I'm just a member of the cast. I, I was a professor, uh, and I was uh, as obsessed by my subject matter, theater, as Robert is obsessed by mathematics. Uh, I identified with his passion. I identified with his love for his daughters, his enjoyment of students, his enjoyment of intellectual investigation. Everything's turned upside down. Even if it's just rehearsal, I find that the day is all about waiting for rehearsal. It's not that I'm sitting around doing nothing, it's just that rehearsal is the center point of the day. I started um, thinking about the role and working on my autobiography uh, about 10 or 11 months ago. I had the luxury of time to think about it a lot before I started doing my character work with my autobiography. But that's the first thing I did, and then uh, started memorizing lines. I hate memorizing lines. Uh, I've never enjoyed it, but now I really hate it. That's why I started learning my lines so early, I knew it would take me forever. But my approach was to read and read and read and read and read and read, and read the play. 
I couldn't begin to play the role if I didn't know what his life had been like up to the point we see him in the play. It's in Chicago, close to the campus of the University of Chicago. It's September. It's, I mean, those are the given circumstances. So direct influence on my character, no, but that's the environment in which I live. I haven't really thought about Robert's mental illness. Well, I don't think he knows he's mentally ill. And age, uh, well, I'm, I don't have to act it. <laughs> I am it. I think that's one of the nice things, too, is to have age-appropriate casting. Because no matter how much white shoe polish you put in somebody's hair and how much old age makeup, it's not believable. My age is just uh, a fact. It's just there. Uh, director and Professor Rebecca Bailey, this is her third year. So I had seen her work over a two year period and, and knew her slightly, uh, but I knew she knew what she was talking about and I knew she did uh, quality work. And I told her about 18 months or so ago, I said, I would love to play the role of Robert someday in Proof but only if it is the best thing for the theater program and for the students. And if it's not, I don't want to do it. And don't get me wrong, I'm selfish in that I want to do the role. Uh, and it's about the only role left that I really would want to don uh, donate, uh, give this much time to. I'm not interested in just playing a role, just to be playing a role. Robert was something I wanted to do. This is it. <laughs> I don't, uh, there's no other role I want to play enough that it would be worth the self-discipline and the dedication. my first play when I was seven years old. And I'm pretty sure from that point forward, acting was, was what I wanted to do. It was how I learned to process the world around me. It was how I learned to interpret the world around me. I think it's where I found my voice. Uh, I worked on a children's TV show. I did. My parents drove me to every audition within an hour radius of where we lived. I, I was doing college theater by the time I was 11, 12 with the community college there. I started teaching middle schoolers things like improv games and, and different uh, pieces and theater games and things like that. Theater is the ultimate teacher for something like time management. That had an influence on me from an early age because I, I always assumed everything sort of worked that way. But it taught me a lot about being able to prioritize what needs to happen because at the end of the day the curtain is going to go up. There is a firm deadline, patrons have bought tickets, and you need to have a show ready. And that's been a really great tool in a lot of other uh, pieces of my life where I'm able to sort of prioritize what needs to happen and what's the most important piece of that. Theater impacts everyone who experiences it. You know, this pandemic has made such an impact on what it is to be live and to share space with other humans. Um, theater is, is ultimately the telling of, of the human story, of what it is to be human. Seen through history, in times that it's, it's faded and, and moved and changed, but it always comes back and it always is a part of, of our history and a part of, of how we identify and discover who we are as human beings. And we're back with Clara McElroy and their series of stories. Um, let's just dive right into the first one. It's kind of the odd one out of the three, kind of going into, you know, self-improvement, body positivity. So if you could just run me through what gave you the idea for that story. So Eden's always tells us to look for the people who always want to be on camera, and Joe Nathan is definitely one of those people. He's one of my best friends here on campus, 
Uh, so it just seemed natural to go to him for a story and something that he has really been um, on recently uh, and newly, especially over the past Christmas break, was uh, body positivity and uh, getting in shape, which is something that I think all of us can definitely uh, uh, go towards in the future, have that for a goal for ourselves, but that's something that he definitely has for himself, and that's something that I personally admire, and so I, uh, why not do a story on it? That sounds great. Um, I don't know if you have any lessons that you took from it personally, or if there's anything that you wanted the audience to take away from it. Uh, what do you think the main message of that story would be? I mean, probably just love yourself. You know, like there, there's, there's so much darkness uh, out there that you, you gotta kind of gotta be that light for yourself. You kind of have to uh, that that self-directed motivation is something that I admire so much from him, and is something that I I'd love to improve upon myself as well. So, and I think that other people can probably take away from that as well. Yeah, definitely an important message. And going into your next stories, uh, let's talk about Final Curtain. Just going into the role of an actor. I believe you're a theater major. Mm -hmm. So Something like that. <laughs> yeah, just kind of run me through uh, kind of what the motivation for that story was and how that panned out. Well, I just got done with the production of Proof and we had rehearsals all weekend. Um, and the story was due like the following Tuesday. So I had like no idea when I was gonna be able to shoot it. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be in the theater all weekend. I'll just do someone in there. And one of uh, my fellow performers who played my dad in the production, uh, it, was, it's, it was, was gonna be his last show, like ever. After that, he's not, he's not gonna do theater anymore. So I was like, I mean, I, I gotta, like I gotta cover uh, something with him because it's, I don't know, it's so important to him and it's so important to us because of course we're involved with it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk to Pat Farmer in uh, that sort of way. And just, just before he, he did his final performance. Yeah, that sounds very great. And Pat Farmer in the story actually goes a lot into just the process of getting ready for a role and you know, getting into the mind of the character. So if you could tell me just um, what do you think that kind of does to you as a person? Like do, does getting into these different characters and like having to learn about them and their motivations and their backgrounds to kind of embody that character, uh, does that kind of shift the, the way that you approach life in general? Definitely, I do would definitely say what I think uh, being in theater, at least for me personally, speaking for me personally, it's made me a lot more open it's made me a lot more open-minded uh, to be able to see these people's stories and see these atmospheres and these environments from uh, certain people's perspectives that you might otherwise not have ever thought about but are being forced to think about because um, that's now a part of your job, that's what you do. And so you have to think about it even if it's not something that you, you, you personally would do or you personally would ever engage in, you still have to be vulnerable and um, know that it's no nothing you do up there is a reflection of necessarily yourself, but is a reflection of the character. And your goal is to to play the character. That's the that's the number one thing. You don't want to uh, get distracted from or anything. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely made me more open, and it's definitely uh, helped me be able to process different things in the world and. Um, just learn how to be more compassionate towards others and be more understanding of what they're going through the best that I can. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Now, kind of going more into uh, the director's perspective, uh, you made a story called Profile of a Director. Um, just kind of run me through your inspiration from that as well. So, uh, like I said, I spend most of my time in the theater, and Rebecca Bailey is our theater professor here, and I spend a lot of time with her. So I, I, I've noticed that I, I started doing stories on people that I was spending like the most time with, um, and she was definitely one of those people. She she directed the past all the plays <laughs> here actually, um, and. And I'm going to go to South Dakota this summer with her uh, to to do some more theater up there. And I, I don't know. It's just it's just I spend a lot of time with her, and she's someone that I look up to a lot. And she's someone who I view as an extremely successful person. So 
Um, and, and uh, directing is something that also um, interests me quite a lot. And since being at Ozarks is an opportunities that I've, I've gotten to have with directing have been awesome and have been through her. And so she's been kind of like a, even a directing mentor to me or whatever as I'm exploring this new avenue. Uh, and, and in directing these little mini shorts uh, myself in media production as well, kind of, they, they, it's, fu it's fun to see how those two things can kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, for sure. And I guess kind of a more personal question for you, um, seeing as you are c definitely, like it shows through your stories that you're quite involved in acting in that kind of environment. Um, how would you say that's affected you? Like what skills have you learned? Um, what uh, kind of personal life lessons have you taken away from that? Theater, uh, it, says, it says a lot about who we are as people and it says a lot about I don't know, it just says a lot about humanity because, I mean, we all go into a dark theater just to go feel something. I, I recently read a book and that's what the author said and it kind of blew me away. Like we all, uh, all are wanting uh, to feel something. We are wanting to experience something and experiencing that as a collective uh, in, a, in a dark theater with strangers is, there's something very powerful about, about watching all of that. It's almost cathartic in a way. Theater's taught me to be pretty, pretty vulnerable. Um, it is something that you can't really get away from. You have to be honest with yourself in a lot of situations and you have to learn how to share that with the audience and you have to learn how to share that with others because that's your job. And it's, it's something that you wanna do because you love it and not because you just to do it. Like you, you, you have to have heart in it. So yeah, it's, it's taught me to be open. It's taught me to be honest. It's taught me to be vulnerable. It's, 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 it's a great reflection of humanity and that's what draws me to it. That's great. So last question I would probably have for you. Um, you can tell that there's a lot of uh, lessons that you can take away from acting and from theater. Uh, so just kind of run me through your hopes for what you want to do with it in the future and how you uh, expect that to kind of develop. Well, uh, I'd love to find a way to connect my media production degree with my theater degree, um, whether that be through, uh, there's a place in Virginia, uh, the American Shakespeare Center, which I'm considering working at at some point in the future, maybe acting, maybe working on their Black Friars TV, which is very media production oriented, which would also be great for both of my interests. Um, I would love to, I mean, I don't know, just auditioning, auditioning for anything and everything that I, I absolutely can um, and getting these internships over the summer, like the one I have in South Dakota, I hope to continue that in the future as well. Um, just acting wherever they will let me, you know, I will, I will keep seeking out opportunities and as long as they will have me, I will be there. All right. Well, thank you very much thank for you. allowing me to have this interview with you. Uh, that was Clara McElroy. Thanks for joining us.